So just a few weeks ago, Diablo Immortal came out with their closed beta and I've been playing it non-stop. Today in this video, I'm going to give you my impressions of the game. In fact, I'm going to give you my top 5 likes and dislikes for Diablo Immortal. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Captain Nemo, welcome to another Diablo Immortal video. Today we're going to be talking about my top 5 likes and dislikes for this game I've been playing non-stop. I've been really busy grinding Diablo Immortal, and in this video I put together a list of top things that I really love about the game, but I also paired them with the top things that I really don't like about the game. Put them all together, and we're going to talk about them today. We're going to start with number 5 and work our way all the way up. So let's get started. So number five, let's start with the like, or in this case, a love. I love that there is so much to do in Diablo Immortal. This is a casual player's paradise, and even pros themselves will not get bored. Between Elder Rifts, Challenge Rifts, Dungeons, you could do Zone Events, there's a big upgrade system for the gear, for all of the gems, there's a lot of endgame system, tons of vendors, there's just so much to do in Diablo Immortal, there's the Heliquary. You have the entire PvP system called the Cycle of Strife. You will not get bored with a lot of stuff that you can do in Immortal. It's a combination, I feel like, of all the best things that Diablo can offer. And it's all packed into this mobile game. So I really love that. The fact that it's mobile it makes no difference. This game is full of activities. You will never get bored. No matter how much of a player you are, from casual all the way to even hardcore. And this is where my dislike comes in. Although there's a lot of stuff to do in Diablo Immortal, there are restrictions when you get to high enough levels. What the game does, it punishes you if you are playing really hardcore. So if you're a casual player, you won't have any issues, but when you start playing the game a lot, there are restrictions that get put on you. When you get to a high enough level, there are other restrictions that sort of, sort of in my opinion, kind of promote you into not playing the game or slow you down a little bit is a good way of putting it. I actually did a whole video on leveling restrictions for Diablo Immortal. I will link that video for you up top. Check it out when you have time. It really explains what I mean in this case. But like, for example, when you get to Hell 1 difficulty, you can't do dungeons by yourself. You can only party up with other people and do them. There's a lot of other things that basically sort of slow you down and restrict you. And if you get to a certain point in the world paragon system of the server, if you get above that point, you even get restrictions on the amount of materials you get back and the XP that you gain by just playing. So even though there's a lot of stuff to do in the game, and it's amazing, it really is, like we talked about, there are restrictions that are put on you for the amount, for the way you want to play the game. And I really feel like I don't like that part. So love the amount of stuff to do. Don't like that you have restrictions when you get to Hell 1 with the amount of players that you're playing in the dungeon, or if you have to do an event where you see a hidden layer and you need another player to open it up, that makes no sense to me either, and on and on and so forth. Those types of restrictions, I feel like, slow down the game and don't really pick it up for me, so I don't like that. Next, number four, let's talk about classes and how I love the amount of classes or tunes or characters, whatever you want to call it, there are in Diablo Immortal. Not that the fact that there are a lot of them, six, and we're going to get a whole bunch more as the time goes on, but their uniqueness. I love the fact that they're all different from one another, and when you're playing with one class, you're envious of the other ones. Each class has its own little unique flavor, its own style, and it forces you to play a certain way, and I really like that. I like that you can play as a wizard, and then as a barbarian, and as a demon hunter, as a monk, a necromancer, a crusader, whichever class you play, you feel like they're different. They have their own skills, they have their own unique abilities, and they're very different. And when you're playing as the other classes, you like that. You look at the Crusader, you're like, oh, I really wish I had the horse. That's so awesome. When you're playing as, as you know, when you're playing as a barbarian, you have the, the fast speed and you have a bunch of other, there's really cool things for each class and every other class is envious of it. And it's balanced gameplay wise really well. I really like that. And don't get me wrong, there are things that I don't like. So, for example, some classes have their own class and skill abilities that aren't really balanced in PvP, right? The battlegrounds are lopsided, so they need to be changed. And, like, for example, the wizard, right, that has a, the, the whole scroll to Westmarch versus every other class special ability 
it just doesn't make any sense. There are a few little additions that have to be like done, I feel, but really, generally speaking, the classes are good. One thing I don't like about the classes, or should I say the new system, the way it works, it locks you into one class. So if you're playing as a wizard or a crusader or whoever you like, when you start playing with them, you're going to acquire gear, you're going to upgrade the gear, and you're going to get gems, you're going to get a whole bunch of legendary gems, you might spend money at the shop, you might get cosmetics, you're going to keep going on and on. You get all of the stuff that you acquire on your character. And if you were to play with a new character currently in the way this system is right now, and hopefully that gets changed, but you can't transfer that stuff over to the new character. So you have to start all over again. And, and that doesn't really promote any kind of play, especially when you put a lot of money in your character or you might get really awesome charms or the best gems, like a five star gem, five out of five star. What is the chance of rolling that? It's going to be pretty difficult. So the bottom line is there's no way to transfer the gear that you have now, which locks you into one character and doesn't promote you into playing more. When the new one comes out that I'm going to like, I'm going to be like, hmm, I, I want to play it, but I'm not going to because of all of the stuff that I have in my character now. I don't want to leave it. So there should be a way to either transfer it or somehow to move it around so you can play with new characters so the game can promote more play versus less. Because everybody in Diablo Immortal likes to play with a bunch of different characters, me included. So next, number three, let's talk about the PvP system for Diablo Immortal, the cycle of strife, and what I love about it. It dares to be different. It really is different. If you think about it, not the good old battle royale strategy that every other game does, right? Not the good old boring PVP that everybody else does. They did really take a different route. This is a combination of PVP and PVE, which some refer to as PVPE. And, and in this kind of environment, like I said, they dare to be different. They take a new route and I love it. I really love the whole idea of the lore and the story that's baked into this you know, faction versus faction it is really kind of like that lives in Sanctuary. It lives in West Marge. It lives everywhere. You get bonuses. You get a whole bunch of stuff. You get gear. There's a lot of stuff that's involved in this. It's not just, you know, a player versus player where you go in and do battlegrounds, which they do have as well. There is a whole system that goes into it, and it's beautiful. It really is. The artwork, the sounds, the whole story. It's A plus when it comes to creativity, and I really like that. And with all the likes, I have a whole bunch of dislikes for the cycle. Like I said, videos for you up top, which talk about them. But in general, what I don't like about this whole PVP system is that it's very limited in the amount of people that can play it. Only 500 people can be immortals out of tens of thousands of players that are on the server. Only 500 can be immortal. Only one of those can be the immortal. This is going to create a whole bunch of politics. It's going to create a whole bunch of drama and infighting. And again, it's very limited, a beautiful mode and play that's very limited in who can actually participate and play. Now you can argue on the other side that you could be a shadow and participate in some of the activities like the right of exile. If you have the high enough dark house and etc. but you'll never be able to see the Keon's ordeal. You never be able to see a whole bunch of other stuff on the immortal side because only 500 people can get in and those are going to be the toughest, highest players, the players that have the most, the best gear, the most gems and so on. Those are the ones that are going to hold those spots. And you really don't like the fact that those are the players that are going to be able to recruit other immortals into immortality. There is no way to actually prove yourself or get to a high enough level. You just have to be liked by other players. There's a lot of politics that happens in the cycle and that's what I don't like about it. The number two like is the depth of this game. Really step back and think about Diablo Immortal and see how much stuff there is to do. Not just for a mobile game, for any game in general. This, this mobile game pushes the boundaries. It really does. It pushes the boundaries of what people thought is possible. The game has more depth than Diablo 3, right? If you really think about it, there's more systems, there's more vendors, there's more choices, there's more modes. And all of this is done on a global scale on a mobile environment where anybody can jump in and you have PVP, you have battlegrounds, you have cross server matchmaking systems. There's tens of thousands of players that can play all at once. There is a lot of depth in Diablo Immortal. And then once you actually finish the story, there are a lot of end game systems like the Haradrim and the Resonance and Heliquary and all of that, the cycle of strife, which is a whole faction based PVP system we just talked about before. All of that is built baked into this game and it has so much depth. I've never seen 
so much depth before in any game. Forget the fact that it's a mobile game. And the biggest thing that I don't like about a lot of these systems is that they're based on luck. A lot of them, anyway. And some of them are based on straight up loot box gambling mechanics, which means that you can play forever and still not get what you want. It's more based on luck than the grind, which to me really doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not really worth it. Even if you pay to skip the line, sometimes you don't get what you want, which brings me to number one, and that is the monetization system in Diablo Immortal. I feel very strongly about this. In fact, I actually made a whole bunch of videos. I will link one for you up top that gives you all of the details, everything you need to know about the monetization system for Diablo Immortal. But what do I like about it first? So I really like that this system tries to be different from all others. It really tries to provide a lot of value to both the person that supports the game by playing it and the person that supports the game by paying for it. And this is a very hard line to walk. Believe me, I made a whole video on the Diablo Immortal monetization system where we go through and break it down. I'll link that one for you up top. And I actually plan on making another video because a lot of you came back with so many responses talking about what can be done with the monetization system. So we're actually going to do a whole other video where I'm working on it right now. That's probably coming next. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. But generally speaking, at high level, most people here at least think that this system is pay to win and it needs changes. And my number one dislike about this system is that it fails to provide value to both the player that plays and the one that pays. So let's take one side of this coin, the free to play player. If you're not going to spend any money in the game at all, there's no way that you'll be able to keep up on any competitive aspect of the game. If you don't have at least the battle pass, the boon of plenty, and some of the chests, you're not going to be able to participate in the cycle of strife. You're not going to be able to place in any of the challenge rift boards. You're not going to be able to do very well in PvP. And I'll even argue that you're not going to be able to get to the Heliquary fast enough for everybody else when they're playing because you don't spend any money. If you're a free to play player, you're just going to play super casually and there's no way that you can participate in any kind of competitive aspects of Diablo Immortal. That's the one side of the coin. Now, on the other side of the coin, if you're paying for this, this is simply a loot box gambling mechanic that has some monetary value if you strike out. I.e. you can take the gems that you don't like and infuse them into the ones that you do so you never actually lose all of the money, but you're at best gambling with really low odds for real money. There are no guarantees even if you spend it and what's the value in that? And like I said, I made a whole video on the monetization system for Diablo Immortal where I covered this along with Scoria, offensive defensive ratings and all that good stuff. So you should definitely check that one out if you want more. And that, ladies and gentlemen, completes my list of top five likes and dislikes for Diablo Immortal. Now sound down below and let me know what you think. Did I miss anything? Is there something that you would put on your list that I don't have on mine? I would love to find out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.